The Spin-Off Podcast Network. This is Kiwi is back for a brand new season with more inspiring kōrero from special guests including rugby player, father and role model TJ Peronara. My family bring me joy. Rugby brings me joy too, but it's not the same joy as my family brings me. And global dancer and choreographer Kirsten Dodgen. For some reason people think I'm very intimidating. Listen to the new season of This Is Kiwi, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network in collaboration with Kiwi Bank. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. Hello for lover. I'm Madeline Chapman, editor at The Spinner. If you have the means, consider supporting our high-quality journalism by becoming a Spinoff member. Sign up now at thespinoff.co.nz/donate. Hi, I'm Brian Crump, host of Sci-Fi Sci-Fact, a new RNZ podcast in which we take some of science fiction's strangest ideas and explore if they could really happen. Maybe they already have. You can find Sci-Fi Sci-Fact on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, basically anywhere you get your podcasts from. The Real Pod is brought to you by our good friends at Nando's. They've got restaurants across Aotearoa, and if you order through the Nando's app, you can collect Perry Perks points to redeem for delicious rewards. Hit nando's.co.nz to learn more and start earning. Welcome to The Real Pod, the penultimate Real Pod for 2021. It's the last kind of Real Pod proper before we have, next week we'll be doing like a, a wrap up of, of the year in reality TV. Just marvelling at it. My name is Jane Yee, I'm joined by Duncan Greve, we've got T.I. here in production. Kia ora. And uh, we are sponsored by Nando's. So much happening in Nando's world, honestly. Yeah. The latest. They, they did a newsroom. Have you heard the latest? <laughs> Tell me the latest. <laughs> the latest is the uh, one litre medium peri-peri sauces back for a limited time. So you can buy a litre bottle of medium peri-peri and every bottle sold helps to protect the lives of three people who are at risk of contracting malaria for an entire year. That should really be the purchase and then you get a free litre of Nando's sauce. Yeah, it, it should be, but, you know, consumerist society and so on. It's just good to use, use it for good. I love Nando's. Um, also great secret Santa Prezi. True. You know? Medium's good as well. Medium is basically hot by anyone else's name, but it's not so overpowering that you can't just basically put it on, put it on anything. Yeah, I got, some, I got some medium, some hot in the fridge at home, and my seven-year-old has been just dipping everything in the medium. Really? Yeah. And kind of, I don't know. I think he's just like daring himself. I don't think he. I don't think he necessarily like has got a penchant for hot sauce. He just wants to be like hard man. Yeah. At seven. I like that. <laughs> uh, our Facebook is facebook.com forward slash real pod corner. The cornies, speaking of Nando's and the corner, in the intersection of which, met up in Auckland in Wellington, in Christchurch, and there was one, a recent one in London as well for, for Christmas celebrations to open their secret centres they've all been sending each other. And is this real? This is real. Oh, my God. This it's, is so awesome. It's so bonkers. And then in the uh, the secret Santa group, everyone's posting all the photos of the things that they got. I've never seen so many jiggly eyes <laughs> <laughs> or, like, corn-themed things and no less than two cross-stitches with... I'm a corny and I'm sorry on them. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe more. Those are the I, I, just, I, I just saw two. I almost don't want to know this. Like I don't feel up to these standards. No, I feel like we almost need to be booted out. Like yeah. we're, the, we're the most useless cornies that there are. <laughs> um, and we, uh, there are a bunch of subgroups that have propped up as well. So there's like cultivating corns. We know there's politicorns. There's... Uh, what, chat about influences. There's cooking corns. There's all sorts. Crafty corns, I think. I'm trying to get um, like a, a, a horny corny. <laughs> porn corn. A porn corn. I mean, amazing. Anyway, um, so go and join. <laughs> go and join the Real Pod Corner if you can. Uh, Instagram.com forward slash the spin off podcast network is where we are on Instagram. Got a special little something happening at the very end of the podcast today. So you have to listen all the way through. Is that it? No, I forgot about that. Oh, that's not actually well, a surprise, right? Oh, no, no. Uh, we, we can we can do that in real news. Shall we do that in real news? Okay. Okay. All right. Let's get into the real news. Real news. 
Kai has got a delivery for us. It's a little uh, box, couple of box, fragile sticker on it, and Duncan's about to slash it open. We we received this last week, but we had to wait till we were on pod to open it. Oh, I just re- realised what it is. Yeah. Okay, so this was, um, we had someone get in touch on Instagram and say, hey, look, I finally got this thing that I've been working on for some time, and I want to send you some. And I saw the box, and uh, the box says from Road Health Limited, and I looked at it and I was like, oh no, we've been sent some <laughs> adult po- merchandise. A poo or a poo in a, in a you know, like... I mean, a poo would have been like the, <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's possible. It's... It's, it's I, really, I, I thought it was going to be some, so yeah, some, some adult merchandise, and and in a way it is. Uh, it's rude coffee. It's rude coffee from Stephen from the Apprentice Aotearoa, the Buzzy Kiwi. Nice packaging. It's really nice packaging. This is so legit. Oh wow! Oh my god! Oh my god! There's so many. It. So this is just full of. It's a box. It's just full of sachets. I'm going to go mad with this. Some rude coffee. Because the, the great thing is, this is so high low, which is very real pod, very spin off. Check me one. And that um, it's it's uh, like New Tropics, which are you know very sort of the the kind of cutting edge of the the kind of wellness slash test your limits world. But it's also instant coffee, which is just you know you, you, your old life. And I still and, and and as you know, Jane, huge probably three four cups of Makona a day over here. Me I'm too. really excited about this. Um, I think maybe in the break. When yes. we, we were in the break, we were just we'll quickly... Because it's so like quick. You just stir, stir a sachet in with 250 ml of hot or cold water. Because the only other the only other new tropics I've ever had is Arepa. Which we love. Which honestly kind of fucks me up. Like, it's too strong. Yeah. And I love it. And I feel like if I could... This, this is, it's, it's entirely possible that I develop a lifelong relationship. This is not paid, by the way. I'm just <laughs> legit super excited about this. And, and I enjoyed the journey of Stephen on The Apprentice Aotearoa, so I'll be tasting that too. Very exciting. Very, very exciting. I'm glad to see that he's followed through, you know? He didn't just do a thing where he went on the telly and then... And I think, as far as I'm aware, Mike's still breathing, you yeah. know? So... <laughs> So um, Party. also also someone who who's, who's done good things and, and Vanessa, you know they're all they all did it. They all did it. Okay, um, I tell you who else did it? Albie and the Great Kiwi Bake Off 2021. No, I don't know anything about this, but I know that people are absolutely spewing. Can you just tell me everything? Okay, Albie's great, lovely, fine, lovely doctor from Whangarei. Um, he was in the final with Jasmine. Uh, and Courtney. So all three extremely good bakers, as you would expect. However, in the signature, which was Petit Fours, uh, they had to produce two Petit Fours and... So eight, Petit Eight. No, no, it's the Fours doesn't... It, it, it means little oven. doesn't mean four the number. Well, I'm very agree, confusing. Agree, agree to disagree. Okay, anyway, um, he only produced one. The others all put out two. Then, oh, well, disqualified. And the technical came last. What? He came last in the technical. He didn't complete the signature. And then in the the showstopper, he did great. Uh, I mean, relatively speaking. The other the other two also did well, but they just weren't really showstoppery in the same way that his was. And he had lots of... Uh, how, how did he shop, stop the show? I mean, it was a thing with matcha in it. It was... <laughs> Too much of matcha. They made a lot of matcha, like much. They, they swapped I mean, out matcha with matcha a lot throughout the whole season. Uh, Dean, particularly, notoriously not a fan of matcha, and he kind of won him over, and he won Sue over. So, but that alone is not a reason. It feels like if you're effectively zero for two, yeah, uh, on then it's impossible to win. The other two would have had to have had complete disasters, and like did they? set. The kitchen on fire. No, they didn't. And what, what's been the fallout? Like, how did they respond? Well, I noticed that on the uh, the, the TV2 Facebook page, all the comments have been very heavily moderated. So they're all just congratulating LB. That's how people um, are feeling. I went to Twitter right away. Turns out that is not where Bake Off fans <laughs> hang out. There are literally, like, six tweets from the past two weeks um, that are tagged either... GK, GKBO or Great Kiwi Bake Off. Uh, so, the, but but yes, two people were surprised on Twitter. 
Um, everyone I've spoke to has absolutely spoken to the I wonder, where, I wonder where it's happening. Is it, is it Facebook groups? I do don't reckon? know. I don't know. I mean, we've had great Facebook chat in the corner, of course. Of course. And uh, Courtney, one of the finalists, has been in there for the last few weeks. And we've also got a Bake Off alum, Clayton, who's in the corner too. So there's been plenty of, of Bake Off chat. Uh, but no, it was. he used 40 eggs, by the way, wow. in his showstopper. Wow. wow. And Courtney used something like four kilograms of butter or something for buttercream and it was just, it was it was bonkers. He did do, to be fair, his showstopper was the best because it not only um, did it use 40 eggs, but it also contained lots of elements, whereas the other two sort of just made cakes, like fancy cakes. But still, you can't. No. You just can't. I, mm. I mean, it's a total rip-off. But I, I'm, I'm a happy fellow. I'm very nice. I just, I just don't think anyone saw that coming. Okay. I don't know if I can move on from that. Yeah, you, you seem hung up. I'm hung up. Okay. I have to, I have to. The show must go on. The Wellington City Council has released the top 10 most popular and weirdest dog names for 2021. Popular names are like Charlie, Bella, Poppy, boring. Uh, but we're here for the list of unusual names. If okay. you had a dog, what would you call it? Mm, you can't just ask me that. Okay, I, I would, would, would you consider tomorrow. Captain Nana Spider Pig Wolfstein the second or third? No. Okay. Elgood Imperial Stout Ice Scott. No. Detective Justice Butterfield? No. Captain Jack Sparrow? God, no. Fenra Boulder von Ritzweber? I don't like these names. Flash Sparkle Moonbeam? No. I like this one. Go Fetch Quantum Leap Frankie. <laughs> yeah, I can't, can't answer that too. Go Fetch. Uh, also, this one's good. Joan of Bark? E- yeah. Miss Dolly Porton? And my favourite... Apart from the Go Fetch one. Nuggy McSchnugglebutt. No, I don't like it, but Nuggy would be good. Nuggy. Okay. All right. So that's it. That's what's happening in Wellington Dogs. It just... No update from the rest of the country. Mm-hmm. No, I don't like this. It also feels like they all know that Wellington publishes these stupid names and therefore they're trying to kind of boaty boat face, <laughs> you know, the comp. <laughs> oh, it's just it's such an easy laugh, though. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but because that, that one was good. That was a vaunt. You've got to keep it moving. Okay. Well, so you have nothing to offer in this? No. Okay. I stupidly called my dog Pickle. And, Pickle uh, is a sweet little boy. A, oh, no, he's a lovely, lovely little boy. I adore him. And Pickle is a great name for him I, because of quiet taste. But I don't even like Pickles. But uh, people call him Pickles or Mr. Pickle. Ugh. No, just why? Don't I do just, that. Okay. There's only one of them for a start. Anyway, Mark Richardson and Amanda Gillies have left the AM show building after five years. And uh, they had their, their last early morning start on Friday. Richardson's heading to Today FM. And he's also said that he's going to stand for Parliament, which I assume is a joke. But No, I think he sh- will. I think he, he's, he's always kind of made noises to that effect. Really? Yeah. And uh, Gillies <sighs> is going to be a national correspondent for News Hub. Everyone, everyone was sad when they left, obviously. National correspondent. That's, that's the, um, the, the uh, like, Paddy Gower's old gig. Right. So that's the big investigative uh, role. That's, that's exciting. Um, I am sad that Ghana wasn't there with them. Like, right, yeah. They didn't finish the shift. I think that would have been, like, quite a, a TV moment. Yeah. I didn't see it, so I can't speak to it. I'm just reading the, re- reading the bits that are um, written down. But I will say this. There must be no better moving onness from a job than one that is breakfast related. Yeah. Like breakfast radio, breakfast TV. If you get to go and just be like a normal human and do normal human hours, it must be just like so liberating. For 4 a.m. starts is where you've got nowhere to hide. Like some early start job, like I, I start. You do start early. early. Get your slacks at five in the morning. Well, I'm, I'm trying to schedule those now. <laughs> I'm trying to be a bit more. Normal, but that, but that's always just me. That, that, these are my hours. Other people keep different hours. That's all good. But I think it's like I get up, I make myself a cup of Makona. You know, I'm not I'm not having to be on. Like they have to be on. Mm. They have to be made up and bringing the same energy and knowing their stuff at six a.m. to the whole country with nowhere to hide. Oh no. no, thank you. Also, I mean that's 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 a, a, coming from someone who is an early riser. I am not an early riser, and so the whole thing is just... I mean, I studied radio 
That's what my degrees are. And you've been are. a broadcaster. Been a broadcaster. Now you're a narrowcaster. Bre- <laughs> very narrow. <laughs> Breakfast radio is the dream, right? Like yeah. it's, the, it's the pinnacle of your broadcasting career. Not for me, thanks. I actually, there is a terrible part of me that would love like Mike Hosking's job. <laughs> is it like the main part of you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a big part <laughs> the of me. main terrible part of you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a Queenstown couple have decorated their house with so many Christmas lights that people on planes can see it. I don't know if that's such a big Achievement? I feel like you can see quite a lot from planes. Well, how low is the plane? That's true. It's, we need more information. Anyway, Kim and Liam <laughs> Dawson, they, they love Christmas so much. They used 8,000 LED lights. They've got a Christmas tree out there. 50, I mean, who doesn't? I've got a Christmas tree. There's nothing to show off about. 15 insla- infl- <laughs> inflatable Santas. There's owls, reindeer, they projectors. Like they've gone pretty hard. Music. They have definitely gone hard. Um, I couldn't do this myself as much as I... I yep. couldn't do the do, do it, but but I love it. Like I, we're both as self confessed Christmas heads. Yeah, I love it. I would do it. I would do it. A if I could afford it, mm. and B if I could get some little people in to help. Uh, all big people. It's about elves. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I was going to say get a little man, and that's what I was going to say. And I caught myself and was like, "Don't be sexist. Can be little ladies. It's fine." <laughs> so sure, elves. However, anyone who's willing, except we, uh, when we were in the United States of America, brought up large on some Halloween decorations. And our first Halloween back in Aotearoa, we had these inflatable, <laughs> they were our eyeballs, and we had them attached to our f- f- hedge, kind of near uh, the end of our driveway. Got nicked. Yeah. So I don't trust anyone. That's kind of I don't trust what humans. we do. They're just no, like, I had, if you, you know how like every basketball hoop in the, you know, in, in our surrounding area. Doesn't have a net. net no nets. Yeah. What do people well, do with the nets? I mean, you cut it down and then you can't oh, really I, I do anything with it. I think they just pull them down for the sheer debauchery of it. Yeah. That is just... It makes me real sick because shooting yeah. into an empty, a, a netless hoop is, a, a, that's, it's like 30% of the pleasure. It doesn't affect me so much because I fucking miss every time yeah, I try and shoot. Me anyway, either, so. but it's the principle. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, well, you know, it, it's better than, I suppose, people stealing dogs, isn't it? I think, well, yeah, a, but just because it's got quite dark. I know, I was just thinking because <laughs> um, Ben Blackwell, who is a reality TV star and also a member of The Corner. Yeah, pioneering reality star. He, uh, he had a, like a... Um, Santa stops here. One of those things he stuck in the ground, like just a little Christmas decoration that was stuck by someone in his... Yard, and he got on Facebook and suggested that perhaps it was a, a, a sign that there's a little doggy here to steal. You know, you get these going doing the rounds every now and again. Like if you have a um, a sticker put on your letterbox or a mark out in the road, it's like part of a dog gang. Really? Yeah. Sorry, I just I I really took this that somewhere so else. So dark. <laughs> I don't know if it's is true. Is this a real thing? Or is this I like don't a, know. I don't know if it's just an urban myth. Like, have you have you seen that movie Urban Legends or Urban Legends: The Final Cut? You know where they. You flash the lights, and that means that some gang's going to come and kill you. Great, great, great it era. Sounds good. No, I haven't I haven't seen it. But I am thinking, I mean, I've tried everything. I've put marks on the road. I've put stickers on my letterbox. I've now <laughs> sticking one of those Santa <laughs> things in it. He's still bloody he here. Abides. Maybe he goes and then gets returned. <laughs> um, no, Urban, Urban Legends, is, have you seen the Final Destination series? Yes. It's, it's in that vein. Right. Love Final Destination. Um, New Zealand has run out of brown sugar, just for the moment. I should say, yeah. Hoping to have it all back on track by Christmas time, but man, there are some there are some bakers out there stressing it. There was a recall on brown sugar, and now there's a shortage, and there's uh, only one refinery. We've only got one sugar refinery, so it's taking time for stock to be replenished. Is and that the Chelsea could sugar be. factory? I mean, if there's only one, and we know of that one, surely that's the one. Yeah, that that does stand to reason. You know what you need. Brown sugar for gingerbread. You need brown sugar for gingerbread. So there are many a gingerbread house not being baked at the well, moment. What would happen if you did it with you know, other sugar? I don't know. Ask Alby. Yeah. He's a doctor as well, so he'd definitely have science, you know? Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I Apparently you can make your own with molasses and something. I'm not doing that. Where do you even get molasses from? I don't even... What is... What... No. Anyway, I've got about 
I, I'm showing you about that much brown sugar. It does look I'm like thinking, enough. I'm thinking of putting, like selling it at Facebook me. Marketplace. Yeah. yeah. I've got brown sugar at the top of my bloody shopping list, so I was devastated to find out I'm not going to be able to get any. Oh, well. There goes Christmas. Let's have a break. Let's make ourselves some rude coffee. Yeah. And we'll be back shortly to talk about our real lives. When you choose to invest, your money has power. Avoiding companies that finance weapons production or ignore climate change is important. But impact investing goes beyond just avoiding harmful behaviours. It's an opportunity to invest in companies that are actually improving the world. Invest in a better future with the Harbour Sustainable Impact Fund. Grow your wealth and make a positive impact on the world. This is not personalised advice, a disclaimer, and the product disclosure statement for Harbour Investment Funds issued by Harbour Asset Management is available at harbourasset.co.nz. Hi, I'm Brian Crump, host of Sci-Fi Sci-Fact, a new RNZ podcast in which we take some of science fiction's strangest ideas and explore if they could really happen. With the help of scientists from New Zealand's McDiamond Institute, we'll look at all your favourite science fiction characters, from Wolverine to Rumpelstiltskin, Doctor Who to Luke Skywalker. You can find Sci-Fi Sci-Fact on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, basically anywhere you get your podcasts from. We're back, and we are... Loving it. Loving it. Well, I'm loving it. Isn't that trademarked by uh, McDonald's? We're liking it a lot. <laughs> uh, it is the <laughs> rude coffee. I've got it I've got it in the rudest... We have a cup at this point, off, which is sort of an iconic and probably controversial cup mug. It says sheep shagger on it, and it has a a picture of a, a buzzy, a quite a buzzy kiwi, um, doing it with a, a lamb. And they're both... Thoroughly enjoying it. Um, it's night time too, by the way. It is night. It's got the moon. It's also like, it's got the the picture was on both sides of the mug and the inside of the mug, <laughs> just in case you didn't see. If you're trying to drink discreetly from the two rude mug, yeah. um, no, no, no chance. Though, though it never happens that anyone tries to drink discreetly from this mug because it's the, it's the first one that gets chosen each morning. Oh, it's just <laughs> such a cracking mug. But I thought I'd go, if I'm having the rude coffee, I'd put it in the rude mug. And I... I think this is delicious. I think this might be more, like, this is crazy for me to say because I'm so into my Makona, but I'm enjoying it more. It's got a little little sweetness to it. It does have a little built-in sweetness, and we checked, and it's only 0.3 of a gram per serving of carbohydrates, so it's not like it's got a whole bunch of sugar in there. No, and none of those 0.3 are, are sugars. And, and there's, um, there, is a, there is an aftertaste which is unique, but I put that down to the whatever the active... Shall I tell you what the active m- is? Monk fruit. <laughs> monk fruit. That sounds like what Logan Roy was having to uh, increase his fecundity. On, I don't, uh, don't watch it. I've tried. Don't um, let, let's, let's not go there. Okay. Carry yeah, on. It's really not very real part to talk about goddamn succession. Um, okay. No, oh, this is good. This is good content. It's just silence while Duncan reads the, the packaging. Um, oh, it is monk fruit. I told you. A natural sweetener named after the monks in Asia who'd first cultivated it centuries ago. Okay, that is good. It's got L-theanine, ah. natural amino acid found in green tea leaves, to work, proven to work synergistically with caffeine to reduce the negative side effects. It can be so. This is supposed to be like coffee, but without the the sharpness. And then MCT oil, medium chain triglycerides derived from coconut, doesn't just add a beautiful creamy texture, which it does, but also slows down the absorption of the caffeine to reduce the inf- infamous crash. Okay, so. I feel like this, these nootropics are supposed to be chilling me out, whereas the Arepa nootropics are supposed to be giving you that Please hectic buzz. double park with a, a rude coffee and an Arepa. Back to back. Back to back. Or sip, sip, you know, sip, sip each, sip from each. Uh, I do quite like a, like a long black with a cocktail. Okay. Have an evening. Look, I, the, I think the thing is... I'm, the the results, the taste is fine. The taste is nice. It's very good. Uh, we are yet to see what it does to our brains. Okay. So when we've had a repo, we've been like bouncing off the walls and like focused. If at I the have same a time. whole repo in one go, 
Yeah, it's intense. And I'm, I'm pretty got a strong constitution. I can normally take it. I, I can't really take it. Okay. And so we, we get to see if this has uh, it does what it claims to do, but a lovely drink regardless, quite frankly. Um, Bloody good. The other thing, I just I, I, I have to just mention a couple of other things about the sheep shag and mug, which has been around for years, and I've seen it so many times, but I've never really studied it. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to study the, it. The, the Kiwi's got one leg up. And it's also his tongue is like dangling out the side of his mouth. It's got like a, a leg behind for sort of balance yeah. and thrust, and then another that's kind of. In the tongue, the both of them have got their tongues hanging out. The yeah. kiwi's tongue is a long way out. Just really dangling out. And there. the tongue, they're, they're sort of trying to get eye contact, even though they're in the the sort of doggy style position. <laughs> Jeez, this is a rude pod. Um, but but the sheep's looking back over its shoulder, and the kiwi. Forward. I don't know. I think if you look at the sheep's eye line, I don't think sheep's trying to make eye contact. I think sheep's trying to it's, check out the action. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> I mean, the, the main thing is that there's just a huge amount of enthusiasm yeah. between these two Kiwi icons mm, mm. Um, transgressing nature's boundaries and just enjoying each other. It is truly an iconic mug. Can okay. I tell you where this, this mug is from? Yes. No, tell me. So it was from... It was... In the in the downtown shopping centre, you know, with the real decrepit, like, 1960s version before it became the gleaming palace that is Commercial Bay. I used to work there. But carry you? on. Yeah, I worked at a ladies' fashion wear store. <laughs> ladies' fashion wear. Is that posty? <laughs> no, it was called Monsoon. Um, like old ladies. Yeah, carry yeah. On. Love that. So, uh, and we went in... Like as a group, this was old spin-off. It was like uh, Alex, Callum and Hayden. And w- there was like one store open. It was a tourist shop and there was almost nothing left in it apart from this mug, which Hayden bought with immense enthusiasm. And really he made it his own. And, and I'm surprised he didn't take it with him, but he's a little piece of him lingers on. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that. We also had a, um, we've got another mug that's it's a linger, a linger on it from this time last year, Secret Santa. Joe, who used to do some editing for us. Cup of Joe. Cup of Joe. Someone made him a mug with with his face on it and it's got Cup of Joe on it and uh, he left it behind for us to all all to enjoy. So yep. I've never never forgotten him. Yeah. He's still alive. I mean, he's in Queenstown now having a I'll lovely back. time. He'll be back. Looking at Christmas lights, no doubt. We um, could do a whole series on the, the great mugs that spin off, but we won't. <laughs> we won't. Because people wouldn't tolerate that kind of indulgence and silliness on a podcast like but. No, it's quite serious. We're going to talk about our real lives now, as if we haven't already been yarning on narcissistically about our own stuff. Um, have you had anything? Like, things have been very boring for me for the last week. Um, I did forget to move. Oh, if you've got little people listening, but talk about, about to talk about Christmas. So, cover there he is. Um, the elf. I forgot to move the elf one night. Didn't the I? elf on the shelf. Yes. Do they, they, these guys buy the elf on the shelf? I'm not kidding. The cutest thing ever. This morning, I hear my nine-year-old get up, wandering around the house, looking for it. And then once he's found the elf, then he goes and has his sweets out of his advent. And it's just like, this is definitely the last year wow. <laughs> for him. I'm surprised it's still going. Because my eight-year-old flatly told us, um, I don't believe mm. in Christmas, Mum. I believe it's you. And, uh, and 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 said that when she was like barely seven, mm. and this really like harsh like, who are you kidding? Yeah, yeah. Kind of a way. It was I mean, of, I think if they ever actually stopped to think about it, you know. It's also just the incentives, like believe forever. Like yeah. you, you've got to think the incentives for children are. It's better if your grandparents get divorced because double the present. Oh my god! And it's better to believe in Santa forever. Yeah, and I, and I tell you what, <clears throat> I'll tell you what, even parents being separated is, I mean, obviously oh, difficult, they got the, the, difficult the guilt, for the children, the, but the, the guilt, guilt you get the guilt presents. Yeah. And also, I mean, but I... But I don't think it quite outweighs the, you know, the hardness of it for, for a kid. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but for grandparents, ugh. Fine. Oh, yeah, totally. Of course. Absolutely. Remarry. Keep remarrying. Keep splitting. Yeah. I mean, multiply. Multiply. Yeah. Just and then stay in touch with the step. Yeah. St- it's just enough uh, enough time, length of time to form a relationship with the step. You've, have you just down that glorious. whole bloody thing? Yeah, yeah, I crank through them. I Wowie. like to get them very hot. Um, yeah, I forgot to move the elf. I had, so I've had to come up like with excuses. And then 
Things have gotten very loosey goosey with the the rules around the Alf. Like, so he's, he's been moving around during the daytime because he's been forgotten to move. And so, and they buy it all. They even saw some because I put wire in my Alf so that I can um, wrap him around pose things, yeah, so I can pose him. And uh, and they spotted the wire, and they're like, "He's got me." I'm like, "He must have had an operation." Yeah, yeah. And well, just, every time. That's really good. Uh, uh, we were just Vivian just banned us from the Alf. She's like. That thing is creepy, and I don't like it watching me when I do my stuff because she's always mm. doing naughty shit. Mm. She's like, mm. I don't want to do my naughty stuff in front of him. Mm. So, um, yeah, he got banned. Love yeah. the principle, though. I do too. I do too. It's uh, like snitch toy. <laughs> I just, I've, I, the, my Santa threats have been getting earlier and earlier. Like, I'm, because I like, I email Santa, I text him, I call him, security cameras, the works. Um, it starts, it started in October this year, and it's just, wow. Yeah. Because it's, it seems to be the only threat that works. I feel like you could get like some cameras around your house, and then we've got footage of them doing something naughty. You could clip it, email it to yourself from Santa dot Claus at whatever northpole dot co dot nz, and then be like, oh hey, this came through from yeah. Santa. He's yeah, he's pretty he caught, pissed. He, <laughs> I think we can One go more, for you. more elaborate. We have had to do it because then our kids have gotten onto like all the presents they want from Amazon. And so I've had to, have I told you this? I've had to like make up this big lie about like social distancing at the fact, at the, the toy factory um, and therefore the production's down. So, was, and, and there's, you know, we, we've got shipping delays and, in supply chain problems, and so therefore, this is when the facts change, by the way, uh, <laughs> therefore um, we can only get, you know, toys that you can get in New Zealand, preferably the toy store close to us, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, because the couple of times we're like, can't get that, don't think we, and they're like, he'll just make it. And so yeah. I've had to come up with this. So you can, you guys can borrow that, by the way, if you need it. No, that's free. useful. Um, another news from this week for me, I just last night... Tried handy ladying. Oh, yeah. What's your handy lady? I handy ladied a mirror that I bought cheap because it didn't have the bit that fixes it to the wall. And so I put some screws in it and then, but oh, look, I think I had bought cheap, you know, those lug anchor things that you have to, mm. and they weren't holding very well. And so now I've just got giant holes in my wall. And then I tried to put out some hot, and I was just like sweating. What should have been, because I've got all the bits, got the drill bits, got the, Got all the bits and pieces. Is it, how heavy age. is the mirror? Pretty heavy. Right. Don't worry about the mirror though. I got the mirror out, but then there was these other hooks that I was trying to put up. And just honestly, what should have taken twenty minutes tops, hours, hours. And then my house was just absolutely littered with screws and hammer and measuring tape and draft stopper. Don't ask why, but there was some of that too. I. I've been there. I'm better now. I think that handy ladying is just something that you just have to keep. I've been doing it forever. I truly have. This is one of my just my worst. I take, try to I try to problem solve. Do you, know? do you have a good stud finder, for no. example? I, I got the wire cutter recommended stud, right. stud finder. It's quite expensive, but it it really knows how to it find a stud. stud. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so that's me. What about you? Uh, uh, I feel bad because I've already used this on um, cult, the episode of Culture Vulture, which I recorded earlier this morning. Did and, you plug the real pod on Culture Vulture, by the way? Uh, oh, okay. Carry on. Why didn't I do that? I don't know. It might be. Mm. Carry on. No, I feel bad. Anyway, no, my my, uh, my my ancient grandmother, who basically for a long time just refused to leave her retirement village, just um, randomly came over to our house on the weekend and was... Yeah, she seemed like she was sort of fading and not particularly into being alive anymore. Um, oh, I didn't for, know. For quite a while. Awful. No, no. I mean, it's it's kind of all good <laughs> in a weird way. Um, but she was like in vintage form and just roasting everyone, kind of half intentionally, half unintentionally, particularly my dad. And so I had like this, basically this whole group of whānau who, you know, for various reasons, hadn't I hadn't seen in months, and they just suddenly showed up, and it was. Put on an absolute show, and it was it was just one like another of these things that like a little thing that you'd been missing for so long that you'd kind of forgot mm. what it was or forgot what was fun about it, and um, 
Yeah, really enjoyed it. Oh, that's nice. It's very mm. heartwarming. Yeah, and she's actually, after like quite a few summers of, of just staying in Auckland, she's planning on coming to to the beach with us and staying for like weeks. And it, it all just feels like, it's just quite nice to think that she can just, you know, because her, her, my, my grandfather died a year ago. Oh. And, and she's just like, okay, well, if I'm going to bloody stick around, I guess I'll yeah, move live, about I'll live, a bit and be alive. Yeah, live my life. Yeah. Um, oh, that's, that's, it's, it's like a Christmas movie. Honestly, I feel, have you seen Bad Santa? Yes. Yeah. I feel like she could be a, a, like a combination of Bad Santa and Dirty Grandpa. Right. Um, <laughs> could be could Amazing. be starring Jude. Like she's got a mouth on her, but she doesn't – yeah, she's an amazing individual. Um, oh, so, so Christmas you're going to be at the beach? Yeah. That sounds no, nice. No, but not long after. Right. Because she'll still be there. What are you doing Christmas? Do you get the whole whole what happens? Do you do you extended family? Do you well as, as far as it extends, you know, in terms of because we've got well you want want to see Jet, who's also got to see uh, her mum's side of the family, and man, it's getting real technical. It's never not complicated though, right? Like Christ- it's Christmas never is made for a particular type of. I don't know, like American family or something. I don't know how it's It was it's made for my family for a long time because out of five girls, we somehow wrangled it for, for many, many years to ha- all have partners who, like, didn't – their parents weren't in the country or, you know, so – so there was no having to go see in-laws. They like everyone just descended on on mum and dad's place. I mean, that's the dream, but I haven't had that. For oh, it's all, it's all, like that's all twenty gone years gone out the window now. I've always been moving between. I'm th- I'm threatening to not even go to my. my wow, my I like that. It's a long story. <laughs> it's a long. It'll be a great movie one day. It's tricky. What, what what's your karehimeti? Uh, I go down to Wellington to oh, yeah. spend time with my family. Um, never once spent Christmas together with my partner. We just bugger off to our respective really? partner and then oh. meet up later. I respect that a lot. Like later as in later in the year, not not on the day? Uh, yeah, later in the year, like around New Year's. I'll usually go up to Northland and see her whanau. Wow. That's, that's great. Everyone's that's got their good. own way. That, that's a better, like, just have a firm line because – Travelling, like I, I used to have to drive like three, four hours every Christmas day. It was a pain in the ass. Stuff that. Yeah. I, it's, like, I, it's not very Christmas nah. I used to be madly in love with a, a fellow who um, he had his family Christmas and I wasn't invited. I could come on Boxing Day because none of the adult children had partners come along on Christmas Day because they all still like to get up in the morning and climb in their parents' bed. I mean, it started cute and then it turns real quick, right? Whoa, that can go in the Christmas movie. And then, uh, and then, yeah, it's a different kind of movie though, that one. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of a, a frat pack kind of. Um, and then, then shortly after we broke up, he met someone else and she got to go to Christmas. Isn't that always the way? It's always the way. Did she climb in the bed? I don't know. I, Let's just... <laughs> I just, I just <laughs> they didn't show it on Instagram where I was looking. <laughs> anyway, um, that went sideways. Crypto, I just thought I'd give you an update. Oh, yes. I mean, it's bottoming out. I mean, I am losing yeah, you, money. You, you, you definitely picked a bad time I to picked a terrible join the time. revolution. Absolutely terrible time. Um, something like, I don't know what how to do percentages, uh, but I've lost some. It's very vo- volatile. It's very That's volatile. It wasn't a lot of money that I put into it, so I'm just waiting for the bounce back. In the meantime, having a lovely time playing the game. I've learned so much about the game. Well, that's good. It's basically like Pokemon, which I never played, but now I feel like it's, it's, it's quite complicated and I feel a sense of accomplishment that I have through trial and error and watching a couple of YouTube videos and so on. Uh, I've, I've learned the ways of the axes. Now, do you know with the, the cryptocurrency that you're invested in, is it proof of work or proof of stake? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, we have – do you have anything else to add? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I I'm can't out. answer that. I'm, I'm just limping to the end of the year like we all are. We all are. But we've, we've got something very special has happened. Oh, yeah? Cue the Max Key Corner music. Like, 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 and subscribe. Max Key Corner. I know. I know. I'll never forget you. I haven't heard that for a long time. 
God, I it's good. Love it Holds so much. Up. We still really need to get that on the internet so we can make our millions. Yeah, we need to get on Spotify. I've got to talk to P. Willie. What, do we own the? Do we ever figure no, that out? Well, I mean, we did pay for it, but I, I'm sure that there would be mechanical royalties and performance royalties mm. and so on. Joe, I'd, I'd really like for it all to go to Paul Williams because I don't think we ever paid him adequately for it. Well, I'd like for us to get some. Please. Yeah, we'd all like to get some. Christmas is an expensive time of year. Anyway, uh, Max is back on the gram. Oh, and, is he back on the gram? Well, he, like he's a developer. Right, he's turned into a developer. He has got his own like business page, and he's posted on his personal page about his business page. But he's uh, done up, a, done a, done a flip job, done up a house, and sold it. Now, well, you were saying something about three properties or well, three. So, so I like. I think. I mean, I haven't checked because I don't like to check. But my guess would be that there would be a revulsion at the idea of Max Key, comma property developer. But what what he did was take a house, a big section with a single house on it, and he's turned it into three smaller dwellings on the same section. And I'm like, good on you, Max. Like, that's densifying the city. You know, if you take you take a take a single you take a piece of land that previously supported a single family and make it um, make it able to support three. That's what the city needs and. You know, obviously the, the idea of, you know, the, the son of the Prime Minister being a property developer will be easy meat for um, for certain social media accounts. I'm just like, God, of all the things that he could have done with his life, you know, with his sort of influencing, and I think he went, maybe went to like Forsyth Bar or something, I'm like, this is actually kind of what the country needs right now. So shot, Matt. Except for, do you know where it is? It's in Glen Innes. Yeah, but I feel like it's just, have you seen the house? It's very fancy. It's not very nice. I feel like it's just part of the gentrification well, of Glen Innes. That's the only problem I have with it. Well, yeah, sure. But they're actually, it's just a modern house. Like, it's basically like a GJ Gardner home. And three the three houses on one section will invariably be considerably cheaper than the previous one on the one section. Sure. So, yeah, you can make the gentrification argument, but that's... I'm making it, Duncan. Okay. I'm making it only right. because... I I'm understand co- that intelligent people can disagree over this <laughs> one, but I'm choosing to believe the Max Key is walking into the light. I hope so, but I feel like he could have he could have done some... Uh, something probably slightly more affordable. I mean, he's not... I mean, that's not the point, is it, when you're flipping houses? It's not to make affordable well, things for people, is it? Yeah, but if, as a byproduct, you turn one house into three houses, almost anywhere in the city, that is a good thing. And the upshot is... He gets three lots of lots of money, so that's nice for him because I'm sure he needs it. Um, MK Capital, by the way, MTK Capital. What do you think the T is? Do you know what his middle name is? Trevor. Trevor. Probably not Trevor. <laughs> um, anyway, but that's exciting. I feel like it's a it's a new it's a new era. Max Key's going to be as a byproduct of him starting this uh, property development career. He's going to be back on on the internet. Yeah, it's it's, a, and I also like that there was this long, dark period where you're like, what's he up to? And it turns out he was trying know. to build a business quietly and waiting for the results before he came out until, again, good on you, Max. Like, that's that's maturing. He's growing. i got to say, weird choice of fencing for that front house, though, around the deck. That's, it is weird. It is bizarre. It doesn't matter sold already. It's not going to affect the sale. I'm not doing, I'm not going to fuck up his sale by saying that, um, but it is weird. Anyway, best part of it all is we got to hear the song again. We did. That's the best we, part. That, that's what we did. Yeah. Just now, listen to the song. <laughs> we definitely, we definitely take a break when we take a break, and we definitely listen to the stings live in the studio. Just yeah. Hey, actually, that's the end of our podcast. Uh, we've got one more to go. It's going to be our end of year wrap up. We're going to be talking about. So I am talking faster, aren't I? Yeah. It's the, yeah. It's the coffee. But I don't think it's the new tropics because they're supposed to be chilling you out. I'm feeling great. No, I thought that was a balanced thing. So it's like the nootropics, like they give you the good part of the caffeine without the bad part. So you get the buzz, but without the jitters. It slows down the absorption of caffeine. Yeah. So you get the good, you get the focus without the jitters. Yeah. I'm not jittery. I'm not just, jittery. I'm just thinking on my feet. I'm, go- I'm ready Fair to go. Trade coffee. I'm ready to go. Oh, Can, love it. Um, I'm going to buy it. Okay, thank you very much, by the way, to Nando's. Thank you very much to the spin-off members. Thank you to the Cornies. Thank you to TI here. I mean, do we have to, to, to Tara, do we sort of, is this, do we do a big end of year thanks on the next one? 
Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's all the same people, really, isn't yeah. it? Sure is. Um, but also, uh, yeah, join us for that. That's what I was going to say. It's going to be dropping the we same time. We don't know time. how to do this. <laughs> We're really six years on, still don't know how to end a podcast. Why if not? you know, sound off in the corner. Yeah. Sound off in the comments and tag your flatties and dad. Still going. I'm still going. Stop the podcast. Stop. <laughs>「I'm Duncan Grieve, founder of The Spin-Off. You can help us keep all of The Spin-Off's award-winning journalism free for everybody by becoming a member today at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. Are you curious about how business can be better? I'm Simon Pound and I host Business is Boring, a podcast where I caught it all with some of the most interesting people in entrepreneurship, commerce and making things happen. Tune in to Business is Boring every Tuesday, brought to you by the Spinoff Podcast Network in partnership with Smart Business Lab. The Spinoff Podcast Network.